So in 2014, in this very city, there was published in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, front page of the New York Times on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, was published an article that said, Space Ripples Herald the Origin of the Universe. And it was an announcement that the BICEP2 experiment had detected what are called gravitational waves, waves yeah. primordial waves of the ripples of space-time. So BICEP, uh, that's an acronym. What's an that acronym. acronym for? I created the acronym. It was a Background Imager of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization. I'm just checking his bicep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You want something? You want yeah, something? exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't discriminate. The bicep, equal, so equal, equal what's what's right it looking at? Space guns. <laughs> guns? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> give me back the acronym. The Space Gun Show. Background, by the bicep. background. Imager mm -hmm. of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization. Now, oh. why is that so clever? Why is that not just a dad joke? Well, the signal that we're looking for is called polarization. And that polarization pattern, if you were to be able to see it with special polarized glasses, we'll get to in a few seconds, you would see a swirling, twisting, or curling pattern. So I wanted to make bicep the muscle that does curl. And I got Ooh, away with the dad joke I even before I had kids. Oh, I see what you did there. See, see what you did there. Uh -huh, that's not bad. The my curl yeah, yeah, is, is only exercises one muscle. Yeah, that's right. No that's other it, muscle. Else. Curl is that's the bicep. It. That's right. All right, very good. So yeah. So so what were you on that project? I was, the, well, I founded the previous predecessor experiment called Creatively Bicep One, you know, uh -huh. the first incarnation of it. And just like with your iPhone, every couple of years you upgrade it, you get more pixels, mm -hmm. you get mm -hmm. more detail. But the cool thing about it, literally, it's Wait, at the- So it's in orbiting. No, it's in the South Pole, Antarctica. Oh. So it's at the very bottom oh, of I the world. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Um, and so- Penguins would call it the top of the world, but- <laughs> That's okay. right. I don't want to be too, you know, <laughs> polar bear specific, yeah, eccentric. So we, uh, so I created that experiment along with my late great um, colleague and mentor Andrew Lang. Uh, tragically, took his own life soon after we got our first data from the second version of the experiment. But that's another podcast. Uh, but that experiment was was built intently to do nothing else but measure these waves of gravity if they existed. Mm -hmm. And we thought, oh, we'll never detect it. It's it's minuscule. We're looking for signals that are one billionth of a kelvin above the CMB's average temperature, which okay. is 2.7 Kelvin. Right. So it's a the minuscule, we didn't think we'd do it, we so, had to so try it though. The, so the challenge there scientifically is to see a signal that low, uh, right. given the fluctuations that are already there. And the Earth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the atmosphere, <laughs> yep, exactly. All radiating yep. into the into the experiment. That's right, right. exactly, yep. It's, it's literally a string with a bell on it. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy thing is, in, in 2014, you know, we announced we did it. We saw this kind of needle, you know, in a, in, it's actually like a piece of hay in a haystack. You know, it's, it's so- Can you find the hay in a haystack? <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's funny. <laughs> piece of hay. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know great. what you do with the needle? You Actually, uh, Iron Man said this in, in one of the movies, but we all knew this. Right. Okay, if you want to find a needle in a haystack, just burn down the haystack. <laughs> right. And the needle's left. And then that's all that, that right. Because needles <laughs> or, don't burn. Or, or take an electromagnet. And yeah, like you'll that. find the needle like that. <laughs> yeah. So so this experiment was designed to do one thing only, and we never thought we'd do it. If we detected it, we'd be you know kind of uh, the onus is on the experimentalist. You know, you want to know Always. enough that you can detect it, but you have to you know Always. not fall victim to the most pernicious of all scientific fallacies, which is confirmation bias. Right. You're looking for something. Oh, you found it. Eureka! Right, that's like, what <laughs> that never happens. Right? <laughs> but we did. We found it. And I remember telling my wife, you know, this is going to win somebody a Nobel Prize. You know. Spoiler alert, mm -hmm. you know, my first book's called Losing the Nobel Prize, so it wasn't, wasn't this guy. Um, and it wasn't any of us because it was retracted. Later on, as Neil mentioned, we had to do go through the humiliation of after being on the front page of the New York Times, press conference at Harvard, you know, a real show uh, all around the world, CNN, everybody. So what was your academic affiliation at the time? So I was a professor at UC San Diego. Where you are now? Yep, gotcha. correctly. Okay. I've been mm -hmm. there 21 years. So they probably were running with this. Oh yeah, we oh, were on man. the front page of the, the, most, the most important paper of record, the San Diego Union Tribune. Which The know, Union Tribune, I was okay. on the cover of it. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. So that discovery launched into motion what would become the Simons Observatory because that day, I got a call from Jim Simons. He had already been funding a predecessor experiment of mine called the Simons Array, which is a small grouping of telescopes right. meant to also look at the same signals, but other signals too. And he called me up in that distinctive voice uh, after you know smoking Merit cigarettes without filters, you know, for sixty years. He started smoking when he was in his you know late teenage. Jim Simons, seeing what you're seeking, yeah. wanted to participate in that. Puts you head of an early version of the Simons Observatory. Some variant, uh, Simon's array. Similar, yeah. But then the bicep two result comes out. That's right. Which is not good for him. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> bicep two is 
leading the world to well we think has uh, has discovered this these these ripples yes. exactly mm -hmm. they, yeah mm -hmm. but but really they haven't but he doesn't know that that's right so he's like bro what's up with my money right okay <laughs> <laughs> i want it back so he calls me up and i'm like i don't know what to say because i knew in the back of my mind there could be problems with the result and we might need to confirm it with another instrument, which later turned out to be the case, or that we were actually right, and yeah, maybe I might have to say, "Look, you got to get your, I got to give you back your money. I got to have some integrity, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, and refund your money, so to speak." And I was going crazy because where do you get you know ten million dollars and give it back to? Ooh, no, a, that's on a public university. Let me tell you something. That's when I just ran out of integrity. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of money and we, integrity yeah, at the same time. Ran out of town. Ran out of town. Ten million dollars, <laughs> no more integrity. <laughs> <laughs> so then, how? Was it determined? Yeah, yeah. Because I re I remembered this. Yeah. I wasn't close to it, but it was That's it right. was happening. It was a very important. It was an important episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In science. Yeah. Actually. Okay. So now, tell tell pick, Let pick me up see the why action. And, and first. can yeah. I before yeah. you Go even ahead. get yeah. there? Can you tell me exactly what was missing from the discovery that? Invalidated. Absolutely. Let me take one giant step back. Why are we doing any of these projects to begin with? So looking for gravitational waves. Take yourself back to 2014, right? At that phase, we had not detected gravitational waves directly right. as LIGO had. Right. We had an indirect evidence that they existed, but uh, but there was a theory that had been promulgated since the early 19, 1980s by Alan Guth. So the inflationary theory is the answer to the question, what caused the Big Bang? What made the Big Bang bang? And the postulate is that there's a so-called quantum field that filled the whole universe that right. fluctuated out of nothing, and the universe became came into existence. As quantum quanta do, yeah, exactly. They, they do stuff out of nothing and all the time. They are the magicians of the universe. <laughs> yes, everything quantum. <laughs> Watch me pull a universe out of my hat. <laughs> that's exactly what they do. Right. Let me birth the universe over there <laughs> on a fluctuation. On a, there you go. All right. So this discovery, if it were true, if it were confirmed, would be tantamount to discovering the Big Bang itself, which it was done not far from here by. Penzias and Wilson, discovery of the CMB, the cosmic microwave mm -hmm. background, which is what butters the bread right. around the Keating house. So we claim that we discovered this. So that's why everyone said this is going to win a Nobel Prize because right. they won a Nobel Prize for discovering just the heat left over from the Big Bang, right. all the more so for discovering what ignited the spark that ignited the Big Bang. Wow. So that was why I designed Bicep originally, then it became Bicep 2, like the iPhone gets new detectors, cameras, everything. we upgraded it. So we ended up building this telescope and then... When I got this call from Jim Simons, I was in this pickle, right? Because I don't know what to say. I kind of invented, I was kind of the father of the predecessor experiment to Bicep 2, Bicep 1. And, I, you know, it's definitely the father of that. And, and then I was involved with this new project that he was funding. Now, what ended up happening was we had relied on data, not from our own instrument. Actually, someone had taken a picture of a PowerPoint slide from our arch nemesis, the Planck experiment. So the Planck experiment is a billion euro experiment. Bicep was a mere $10 million US dollar. The European Space Agency. You're in, you're mm -hmm. Out at L2 of Lagrange Point, orbiting around the sun and the Earth, the farthest, coldest, deepest, darkest, incredible team, 1,000 people working so on it. So Earth, Sun, L2. Earth, Sun, L2. That's, That's right. where JWST is. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. 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 It was one of the first, it was the second one after Wilkinson. They're hanging up. They're yeah. just parked there. Chilling. Yeah, That's they're right. chilling. Like they're gonna... on stakeout. <laughs> <laughs> Two cops on stakeout, <laughs> sitting there at L2. <laughs> you, should you go for coffee this time? <laughs> I went for coffee last time. It is true because they're like yeah. parked they're there. Parked. Yeah. Yeah, as yep. Earth orbits the sun. Think That's about right. getting a validation out there. I mean, that, <laughs> that is not easy. So Jim calls me up, what's going on and what to do next? So we ended up discovering that we didn't see this pattern that would be the imprimatur of the Big Bang. We didn't see this cosmic swirling curls from the Big Who Bang. Who determined you didn't see it? We, along with our competitor, the Planck teams, they, we worked together to find out that actually what we saw was nothing more than some cosmic schmutz. Right. Some dust. dust. It was yeah. cosmic dust. The people dust. who study dust, they don't call it schmutz. That's right. right. Th to them, it's, it's their a, livelihood. One astronomer's dust is another astronomer's you know, Nobel, lost Nobel Prize. So it wasn't a blunder, Chuck. It wasn't right. like we left, you know, put our thumb over the over the camera or something like that. We actually measured exquisitely precisely this signal that is astrophysical in origin at the mil billions of degree Kelvin level. I mean, it's an exquisite so, so, But it's a local signal, not a exactly. big bang signal. Yeah. happened to be a different exactly. signal. Exactly. That's all. So, uh, so, so congratulations and, and on the precision of the merit. It is. It actually you is. idiot interpreting it the wrong way. <laughs> However, what it did was it's like, oh, this thing works. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Experiment That's works. Basically, That's right. It's yeah. the most precise measurement of what's called an astrophysical foreground. Something in the in the uh, foreground, in the you know space between you and the cosmos, 
that is made in the astrophysics. It's actually the same material that makes up meteorites, and I brought some meteorites for you guys here. Right. So dust is ubiquitous, and the same type of dust that obscured our measurement and prevented me from winning a Nobel Prize is actually the same stuff that the planets are made of. And so it's identical to that. It happens to be magnetic, and it produces radiation and heat, and so we saw it, and we misinterpreted it as the signal from the Big Bang. Produces um, uh, infrared. Infrared radiation. and microwave mm -hmm, emission, mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. So Jim Simons, upon hearing this, he's like, well, what do we do? And then when we retracted the claim that we had detected inflation. Humiliating. And this is a humi this is not like an easy thing to do. Right. Still, he said, I want to go for the signal more than ever now, but we have to remove the dust. So it's a good thing, like you said, Chuck. Yeah. It's actually a good thing. When you make a mistake, you say, oh, I got to refine what I do. It's like you go out to your car, there's dust on the windshield. I got to clean the windshield. No, except you're not going out to the, uni the, the galaxy and removing the dust. You're removing the dust signature in your data. Exactly. Right. So how yes. do you do that without a vacuum cleaner or a dust devil? Yeah, you, you, know, need, you need ways to do that. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so what Jim was was wise about, and what David Spurgle had figured out, because he was one of the ones that killed off the bicep interpretation, he figured out we need to have multiple colors of light. Bicep 2 only had one color of light. Mm. We couldn't see multiple colors. Right. And when you have multiple colors, you learn about the spectrum, you learn about the characteristics. So what Simon's Observatory now does, and why Jim funded that, is it can see the cosmic signal. If it's there, we have to assume it may not be there just because we want it to be there, but it can also see the dust. And when you have the signal, you have the cosmic signal plus the dust signal, so we have a telescope that just So what you're saying, dust. in your one band of light, exactly. you yes. could not distinguish the cosmic signal from the local signal. Yes. Right. In two bands of light, they each will show up differently, differently. in two bands. Exactly. And now you'll be and, able to identify. And now you'll be able to take it, that's right. and, and, right. and take it out. That's right. But that's not what I remember most about this episode. Okay. Okay. I, I remember the ambulance chasing theorists who came behind this false result, <laughs> thinking it's real, coming up with an explanation so they can get their Nobel Prize too. That's right. Wow. That's, right. that's what I remember. Yeah, I got emails. There's like 100 yep. theorists? How many theorists? Well, there's 1,800 papers published <laughs> about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's my most cited paper, embarrassingly okay. enough. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so it was, it led to, so this 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 disaster in some sense led to the you know initiation of this new, most powerful instrument ever made to do the cosmic microwave background. And that's, Maybe the, the, that's the Simons Observatory that's the Simons now, Observ and of in, which you are PI. Yep. Well, congratulations. A, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. That's right. very cool, man. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you. Well, we got to write a book. We got to get to. Oh, he should write a book about it. Thank <laughs> you.